Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Liu. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I'd like to share with you a study uh, using the agile method to examine sources of PM2.5 uh, pollution. Thanks. Uh, so it, it is great that uh, this presentation uh, follows Professor Yu Wang's talk. Now we have uh, uh, a great picture of what we are facing, what problem we are facing. This area, uh, North China, centered with uh, the capital city, Beijing, has high air pollution emissions, leading to a severe air pollution, uh, especially uh, in winter. And also, uh, this region is highly populated. So it is uh, important and necessary to better quantify the sources of air pollution. Now, there are a few ways to uh, analyze the sources. As modelers, we often use uh, sensitivity simulations. Uh, for example, if we want to look at a particular source, we'll perturb the source and run the model, see how it differs with the standard simulation or the control simulation. But in this way, if we want to look at multiple sources, then we need to run the model again and again. That's sometimes time-consuming. Uh, now, the, ad the model adjunct provides an uh, efficient way. It is receptor-based by producing a concentration, then a single round will tell us all the sources contributing to the uh, concentration. Now the model we use uh, is also a just cam model, and uh, it, it has a, a established a model adjunct. The model is a global 3D model, and the resolution is uh, often 2 by 2.5 as Yang Yang present. And we can also run a nested version at a higher resolution, and Yuxuan presents a half degree simulation. Now we can uh, further increase the model simulation to a quarter degree. Now here I show uh, the model simulation for January 2013, as also Yuxuan has focused on uh, uh, model simulation and also overplot the measured PN 2.5 observations and for 2 by 2.5 degree, uh, quarter degree, and also a time series uh, over Beijing for January to May. Uh, overall, we can see that uh, at a higher resolution, the model is better capturing the observations and their uh, variability. That's because uh, at higher resolution, uh, it captures the site uh, uh, measurement for each site, and also aerosol formation is, uh, is resolution dependent. We can also compare the uh, measured aerosol composition. Here we compare uh, not just uh, p total PN2.5, but also for uh, black carbon, organic carbon, sulfate, nitrogen, uh, ammonia. And we can see, again, uh, for the quarter degree resolution, the, bi the low bias for black carbon and organic carbon is uh, much less. And also the model uh, well simulates the uh, uh, sulfate concentration, nitrogen, and ammonia. Uh, the original model simulation has a low bias on uh, sulfate concentration, as Yu Xuan has uh, discussed. We also uh, did some corrections and improvement for the uh, aerosol heterogeneous uh, production. Now, uh, similar but different, we, we uh, in addition to SO2 oxidation by H2O2 and ozone, we also uh, implement in just kinds of aqueous phase oxidation of SO2 by NO2. There are uh, obs observational experimental evidence that NO2 is weak soluble and can oxidize SO2 in clouds and aerosol water. So we implement uh, this reaction in GeoScan and improve the uh, sulfate, uh, uh, sulfate concentration. Now here we compare uh, for January and July mean sulfate production from aqueous phase and also from uh, gas phase. And we can see in the winter time, heterogeneous aqueous phase oxidation, uh, sulfate production dominance over the gas phase, while in, in summer, uh, gas phase uh, is more important. Now move to adjunct. Uh, this movie shows how model adjunct track the uh, pollution source. We take the example for black carbon at Beijing on January 6. And the movie is showing backwards, telling us in the past five days where black carbon is emitted and transported to uh, Beijing on January 6. And we can see the value decays very quickly, indicating the short lifetime of black carbon. We can see the movie uh, is very similar to a back trajectory, but it provides much uh, more quantitative estimates. 
Now, integrating the movie in time and also uh, folk song, uh, total PM 2.5, we can get uh, this picture. Uh, it shows where uh, PM 2.5 over Beijing is coming from for, uh, for January uh, to 2013, the monthly mean. We know uh, uh, PM 2.5 can form, can form from ammonia emission, SO2 emission, NOx, and also primary BC, OC, and dust uh, as a PM 2.5. And also based on uh, bottom-up estimate, each source can separate to uh, different sectors from domestic industry power, power plants, transport, and agriculture. And the values here are in unit of uh, microgram per cubic meter. It tells us uh, uh, how many uh, PN2, how many PN2.5 is uh, coming from for each uh, soft source type as a model underlying grids. So by adding all them up, it will equal to uh, about 157 microgram per cubic meter. This is about 86% of the total uh, January mean uh, at Beijing. So we, we think the rest is attributing to a natural background or nonlinearity in the uh, aerosol chemistry. And now we can clearly see a detailed source contribution for, for the Beijing PM 2.5 pollution. And we can see uh, instead of local uh, contributions, we also see transport from, from, the, uh, from the south and from the west. And we can also see the main contributor is coming from domestic industry sources. And also agriculture ammonia uh, emission is a, is, a, is a big contributor. Now there are also uh, negative values. In this case, uh, mostly for NOx emissions. And this indicates a long linear chemistry. Now uh, rather than total PN 2.5, we separate we test separate tracers for the uh, inorganic aerosols. We look at how ammonia, uh, sulf uh, ammonia sulfate, and nitrate, how they respond to emissions uh, in this model domain. We can see, as expected, increasing ammonia emissions would uh, increase both uh, all of them, and increased SO2 emissions would increase uh, nitrate, uh, nitrate sulfate, but decrease nitrate. Uh, sorry, uh, ammonia sulfate, but decrease ammonia nitrate. And we, ca we can also see increased NOx emissions would actually uh, decrease sulfate uh, concentration. And we see in the model that's because uh, in winter, uh, NOx is titrating ozone. So increasing NOx emissions would decrease ozone concentration and thus uh, decrease uh, SO2 production, sulfate production. Now, uh, by by putting them together, uh, we can come with uh, these pictures, uh, look at uh, source contribution from different, uh, from different aspects, from chemical composition, uh, from emission sector, and, uh, and from where emission uh, regions. And we can see uh, uh, dust and organic aerosol is a main emission contribution for the PN2.5 uh, over Beijing. And we also see SO2 and ammonia emissions are important. And for the sectoral information, we see domestic and industry uh, as, a, uh, as the biggest tool. Uh, even though this uh, sectoral information may subject to large uncertainty because they heavily rely on the bottom-up estimates. And we, we can also see based on regions, uh, Beijing, uh, the local emission uh, accounts for 55, uh, 54 percent. OK, this is my last slide. I want to say a few more words about regional uh, transport influence. We now have a consensus that uh, pollution is local, but we still lack uh, quantitative estimates how strong regional influence are. So here we apply uh, the agile method to PM 2.5 pollution at three cities, Beijing, Tianjin, a nearby mega city, and also Shijiazhuang, the capital city of Hebei province. And here the bar plot shows the uh, uh, regional uh, emission contributions. So overall, we can see uh, nearby source has the largest contribution, but they, they all display a diffused source contribution uh, de uh, depends on where, where they are, and also the transport patterns are different. OK, uh, as a concluding remark, I hope this short presentation uh, demonstrates to you how we can 
how Azure method can provide a detailed source uh, contribution information, and we can use that to improve our understanding and also design a more effective air quality policy. With that, I'll stop and take your questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, uh, so the first question, uh, SO2 is weakly uh, soluble, so uh, we, we use a parameter, a parameter to, uh, well, basically there are literatures uh, that we can use to uh, add the uh, parameter to the model to represent the solubility of NO2 and also the reaction rate for uh, NO2 reacting with uh, SO2. And this reaction is highly uh, pH dependent at high uh, pH, then the reaction rate is much quicker. And the second question is, uh, which one is important for SO2 uh, oxidation by NO2, H2O2, and ozone, right? Okay, uh, what we see is in, in winter, uh, uh, this, this reaction with NO2 is, uh, is fast in, in winter, while uh, I don't uh, quite remember, but uh, um, oxidation with ozone is also very important in winter. Yeah, I, I can check more and, and maybe uh, uh, yeah, a more clear answer for that one. Any yeah. other question? Please. Yes. How do you distinguish the source type? Our source type? Yes. So it heavily rely on bottom-up estimate. As the bottom-up the bottom -up emission inventory provides uh, sources coming from different sectors. And yeah, that sector information is coming from the bottom-up emissions. So you the bottom -up. Yes, that's yeah, separate the, the contribution to different sectors. Other question? Actually, I have yes. one. How come the previous speaker had to adjust the SO2 by factor of two, and it's still too small, and uh, yours uh, seems to be perfect. Uh, well, it is not perfect. So basically yeah, here, uh, here I'm more focused on a monthly mean, and Yu uh, is, uh, is focused on uh, epistotic pollution events. And also we use uh, different emissions. Uh, Yu is using uh, Intex B uh, emission, and here I'm using a more recent 2010 uh, emission estimates. Yeah. It, it, well, this comparison is still not perfect, but from the monthly media, it seems okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you.